All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar sessions for those who are returning. For those of you who are new, uh, we welcome you as well, of course. Today's webinar is going to be What's New in AutoCAD 2016? And this continues on from our um, What's New in AutoCAD LT 2016 webinar, uh, which we had last week. And uh, by the way, due to popular demand, we are actually going to repeat that webinar next week. So uh, if you missed it or want to see a different perspective of it, because we will add some stuff to it, um, we will be repeating that next week. So today, we're going to have Victoria and Dave present this webinar. I'll be adding uh, some additional geeky stuff at the end. Sarah and myself will be moderating along with Naman, our expert elite. So uh, we're going to have a good crew for you and uh, hopefully make this a very worthwhile webinar for you. Right now, I am going to, before we begin, run a couple of uh, three polls just to kind of glean some information here. And the first one, let's see, are we running? There we go. The first one, whether or not you have attended one of our previous webinars, or if this is your first one. Wow, well, we're kind of getting close to an even, even split this time around. So it's nice to see some fresh faces as well as those who have returned. Awesome. All right, let's go ahead and close that one, and two more, and then we'll begin. If you haven't already, when do you plan to upgrade to, to AutoCAD 2016 or LTE or one of the verticals? Okay, close to 30% not being sure. Several of you have already upgraded. And hopefully you're liking what you see. Probably some stuff you need to get used to. All right, let's go ahead and close that one. And one final one. Well, it's not final. We'll have one at the end. This one here we've been uh, throwing out there for these What's new webinars is, are you a member of Augie? Several of the um, features that were introduced with this release come from the uh, Augie Autodesk User Group International Wishlist. So um, if you've had input on that, then um, good job. Some nice features. For those who don't know what Augie is, there is a link in the resource slide uh, that you'll be able to download, and I encourage you to check it out. It's an, um, uh, just an organization of end users who help each other out. Uh, they have their own forums. They uh, provide training, learning resources. Very cool place to and uh, organization to be a, be a part of. It's completely nonprofit, not uh, affiliated really with Autodesk. Uh, it's its own entity, I should say. And I'm going to go ahead and close this one. And I encourage you to check out Augie when you do get a chance. Alrighty. So getting back to our webinar here. Before we get started, we do have some house cleaning to do, as always, for those who are familiar with these webinars. Uh, you can leave your chat uh, questions in the chat window. We will answer those. Um, and it says as time allows, but we try to answer as much as we can, even after the broadcast has ended. The session will be recorded, just like all of our sessions are. And the slide deck and data set can be downloaded from that link. That link will be made available uh, in the follow-up survey that you received from GoToMeeting. So uh, keep an eye out for that. 
or you can try and copy this down. Um, also, you check out our upcoming webinars. This image you see is a little bit older, but uh, we have a landing page where we have uh, a schedule of upcoming webinars. Uh, at the bottom there of that image, you'll see that uh, we have a feedback page where you can leave some additional questions and a direct link to our YouTube recordings. Uh, there's a, I'm trying to point it out here, uh, there's a playlist button here. If you select that, you can actually see all of our previous webinars. All these URLs will be in the slide deck that you receive. You can leave questions, like I said, on that landing page. Feel free to leave feedback on the current webinar, future webinars, if you have any ideas or suggestions. A lot of these webinars are based on your feedback. And you can also send additional feedback to our autodesk.help.webinars at autodesk.com address. Please use the uh, subject line Build Your AutoCAD IQ. Uh, that way uh, we'll know which team should be looking at this. Some of our previous webinars, well we're at number 31 right now. There are 30 of those that we've done. One of them we will repeat like I said next week. You can find these on the uh, YouTube channel AutoCAD Exchange Build Your AutoCAD IQ playlist. Some more uh, final house cleaning here, and that is um, check out the Knowledge Network website. We have downloads available there. For example, for AutoCAD 2016, there's offline help you can download, template files, language packs, and uh, also what's available now is the uh, digital uh, signature uh, LISP signing command line tool. Uh, so um, you'll see when we talk about the security features, how that would come in handy for you. Also, some installation uh, documentation is available on, on this website. So if you're wanting to have some additional assistance with uh, installation, be it network or standalone activation, this is a great resource, this website. Also, links to hot fixes, service packs, and downloads. So, that being said, that being out of the way, we're going to show the enhancements to AutoCAD 2016. And in this webinar, we're going to talk about the drawing format. Typically, every three years, we change that format. And so, the big change this year is that there's no change. Okay, we're using the same format we used with AutoCAD 2013, 2014, 2015. So, um, uh, that's probably welcome news to many of you. Uh, happy about it. Uh, we're going to have, um, show some enhancements to uh, section objects, point clouds. I'm not going to get into great detail on these here because Victoria and Dave will be telling you all about them. I'll be getting into some of the geek stuff at the end here and that is uh, the security feature enhancements, system variable new ones, modified old ones, uh, as well as some uh, installation topics, actually only one topic, but we'll cover it anyway. So I won't bore you anymore with uh, my rambling. I will go ahead and turn this over to Victoria. So let let me get you going there, Victoria. Thanks, Volker. All right, let's uh, jump right into the new features here. Um, the first thing that I'm going to talk about today is uh, section objects. And I've got this file open here. It is uh, Red, Rock, um, uh, Red Rock Amphitheater in Colorado. And what you're seeing here on the screen is a point cloud with um, some conceptual geometry added into it and we'll um, use this for section objects as well as uh, point clouds. So um, to start with, 
uh, let's see. To start with, I've gone into the uh, 3D modeling workspace here. So that's typical. Uh, that's uh, different from the typical drafting and annotation workspace that um, AutoCAD starts you out in. And it has a lot of uh, 3D tools here for you to use. So I'm going to start from the home ribbon, and there's a uh, panel here for um, section objects, and I'm just going to select section plane here, and uh, I'm going to type in O for orthographic, and T for top, and just create a quick section plane here uh, through the model. So if I select the section plane, uh, the first thing you'll notice is that uh, there's a new contextual ribbon tab that's included for section objects in AutoCAD 2016. And if we, uh, I'm just going to orbit the model here a little bit. There we go. Nope. Okay. All right. So I'll come down here. Um, so I've cut this section through the model, and if I toggle the live section, you know, you can see the geometry appear and disappear. Um, it takes a second for it to jump. There we go. Okay, so this is with live sectioning off, and this is with live sectioning on. Um, the next thing that's been added is a, a slice option for uh, section plane type. Um, so I'm going to select the uh, slice, so you can pick a, uh, you can create a slice through the model um, instead of uh, instead of just showing one side or the other. Um, so I'm just going to rotate this 90 degrees, and you can see the, uh, the section change as we go. So I like this one here. I'm going to keep this. Um, here you'll see um, the uh, section offset. So this is offsetting from the um, from the start point of your section. So let's say we put in 50. Oh, this was near 50. Let me put in, uh, I'll put in 20 as a starting point. And you should see that section jump a little bit. And this right here uh, is the slice thickness, and it is controlling the thickness of that slice through your model. So if I change that to um, 20, you should see it. Um, you should see it reduce in size. It's taking it a second to update there. All right, there we go. So you can see um, a very thin slice of your model here um, being displayed in the section. Okay. All right. So. There are also some um, some grip enhancements that have been made, and I'm trying to find them here. Oh, I've selected my. There we go. Um, so if you select the uh, the section plane and grab these grips, um, you can uh, edit this dynamically um, right in the model. Um, you can quickly flip the um, uh, flip this from a slice to a plane or a boundary or a volume. Uh, section plane. So if we wanted to change it quickly, um, we can do so using that toggle. I'll come back in this way. Um, you can flip. Oh, there we go. I think I grabbed the wrong one there. Okay, it is hidden in the geometry there. Um, but it, if it is hidden in the geometry, you can uh, come back up here and change this uh, via the contextual ribbon. So I'm going to switch to switch back to that slice there. Okay. So the next thing I'd like to talk about is point clouds. And to do that, I'm just going to delete this section here so that we can see the entire point cloud. Um, now, this was generated um, in a recap and then brought into AutoCAD. And it's a um, point clouds contain millions and sometimes billions of points, uh, depending on the size of the model. And you can control the number of points in. Um, oh, where are we? You can control the number of points within the model by um, coming into your options dialog, 
and going to the 3D modeling tab. And then right here under 3D objects, there's a slide toggle, or you can uh, enter the number of points. And I'll just I'll reduce this here down to, uh, here we go. And you should see that change. Maybe that wasn't enough. Um, let's say, there we go. Okay, so you can see the density of the, uh, the um, point cloud has reduced significantly there. All right, so I'm just gonna bump that back up for the demo, and you'll see it become a little bit denser uh, as we work with it here. Okay, okay. Oh, it's not behaving. All right, I'm just gonna jump back to my home view. There we go. Okay, so you can see this, um, there's this amphitheater here. Uh, for now, I'm just going to isolate the point cloud and get rid of this geometry here um, so that we can work with the point cloud exclusively. So I've selected the point cloud, I right clicked, and I'm going to uh, isolate objects. There we go. Okay, so from here, um, if you'd like to isolate a portion of the point cloud, let's say you don't need the whole site model, you can select the point cloud and it'll bring up this contextual ribbon tab. And from here, uh, you can control the um, crop states. So let's say we'll create a rectangular crop state around this, um, just this amphitheater up here, uh, this stage area. And you can choose inside or outside. Uh, I'll choose inside. And that just crops it down so that you're only working with a small portion of the point cloud. Um, you can save these crop states in here, um, in the crop states manager. Um, but for now, uh, I would like to work with the whole model. So I'm going to step back. Okay. So we did see uh, section planes a minute ago. Um, there's a section plane option uh, that works particularly well with uh, point clouds here, uh, the two-point section, uh, two section plane. And I'm going to use that. And if you zoom in here, um, what you'll see is that um, I, I have uh, no O snaps on here, no 2D O snaps, no 3D O snaps, but I do have my dynamic UCS turned on. And this is a new feature here. Um, point clouds do now respond to um, dynamic UCS. So you'll see it's detecting this plane on the front of the, uh, the stage there, and if I jump around, it'll detect other planes uh, within the model. Um, but let's just grab this one for the two-point plane, and here's our section plane being cut through that model. And I'm going to select the section plane and bring up that contextual ribbon tab. And I'm going to switch this to a slice. And I'm going to set it at a, um, a very thin slice, so let's say maybe 20. And that'll reduce this down. Uh, and you can see, once it takes, when we zoom in, it's just got that very thin slice of the, uh, of the model taken out. And um, one of the cool new features that you can use uh, with section planes and point clouds is this generate um, uh, Sorry, uh, extract section lines tool. So it's go what it's going to do is um, generate uh, AutoCAD geometry on top of this uh, point cloud based on um, based on the geometry that's been pulled in through that point cloud model. So I'm just going to select that point cloud here. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay, and it'll bring up this extract section lines from point cloud uh, dialog box. And you'll see a bunch of different settings here. You can uh, tweak these. The ones that I'm going to focus on today are um, these tolerances here. So the minimum line, lane, line lanes to be generated, I'm just going to bump that down to two inches um, so that we get a, uh, some fine details in there. And then the connect lines tolerance, I'm just going to bump this up to two feet. And I, um, I want to really have my um, section line stand out here, so I'm going to change this to red. 
and I've checked this preview result and this comes in handy when you're working with large point clouds uh, because sometimes it takes them a really long time to generate. So I'm going to click create and you'll see down here it'll process but it's just going to show me a quick preview of, um, of, what, this, uh, of what this section is going to look like. So we've got this geometry and if I'm not happy with it, if I need a little, uh, a little more refinement or, or maybe uh, more generalized line work, uh, you can go back in um, by just hitting enter. It's the default um, back into the settings here. And you can make the adjustments. Um, but I I'm pretty happy with this, so I'm just going to say create and then enter A for accept. And it'll generate that line work for me. And then if I pop over to my left view, you can see that that very quickly allowed me to um, create a quick sketch of this uh, uh, section. You get the trees, you get the, the ground plane, and you get some of the geometry from that, uh, the canopy over that stage. Okay. So I'm just going to take a moment here and get rid of some of this geometry. And I'm going to delete my section plane so that we're back in our model here. Okay. Um, one of the other useful features in here, um, uh, this is actually, this is a building here and then uh, our stage and everything in this area gets a little muddled and once you start drawing on top of this, it can get a little confusing. Um, so if you're really trying to see geometry that's on top of the, uh, the point cloud, um, you can control the transparency of the point cloud um, through the contextual ribbon tab once you've selected the point cloud. Uh, right here on the visualization tab and you'll see this kind of fade in and out as I drag the, uh, the slider back and forth here. All right, I'm going to leave that all the way up for now um, and jump into the next feature here. Okay, so we did talk about the dynamic UCS and that can also come in handy. Uh, let's say, let's say we want to add some conceptual geometry just to the side of this building here. Uh, maybe we want to add some kind of window feature up here. We just want to quickly sketch it to see what it would look like. Um, we're just going to let the dynamic UCS jump to that plane. And we'll uh, you know, draw a quick rectangle here. And then this geometry can be um, maybe extruded to, uh, you know, if you want to def define a quick window um, or a door opening or, you know, cantilever off the building, whatever you're trying to convey in your quick concept there. Okay, so with that said, um, there were some uh, 3D O snaps that were added specifically for point clouds in this version. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my 3D O snaps on. And if there are none on, you click it. It's going to open up this uh, drafting settings tab for you. Um, so let me see. Okay, so here's the point cloud section here. Um, what I'm going to turn on first is this... Uh, is it nearest to plane? Let's make sure that I have the correct one. No, I'm looking for edge. There we go. Okay. Let me make sure that's correct. Yep. There we go. In the drop-down menu, it's a little clearer. Uh, nearest to edge of point cloud. And what this does is it's going to detect um, two, the intersection of two planes in the point cloud. So let me just enter my line command here. And uh, let's say I want to find the, um, the edge of this building here. If you wait just a second, come on. Oh, oh there it goes, okay. All right, so I've got those two edges and if I click somewhere on here, it will draw the line right along the edge of those two planes. And I can do that down a little lower here. Let's say I want these two planes and click there and we've got some we've got this line it's a little difficult to see um, I'm just going to put this on a, a layer that's a little easier to uh, to see there all right uh, additionally I can toggle that transparency down again making things a little bit easier to see as you draw them so there we go we've got that edge uh, the second one that, um, that's been added here is, um, oh, where are we? Ah, corner of point cloud. 
So this will find the intersection of three different planes on, um, uh, in the point cloud. So if we wanted to draw some geometry over here by this planter, let's say, uh, invoke my line command. And let's say I want to find this, okay, there we go. So it'll find the three planes here, and this is where they intersect. And let's say I want to find the three over here. And you'll see that even if they don't quite meet, it will still find that intersection for you, um, kind of uh, interpolating where those uh, planes would meet. All right, so I've got this here. And the last one, and this is the coolest one in my opinion, um, nearest to center line of cylinder on point cloud. So you'll notice that the, um, the curvature of this wall here is detected by the point cloud and uh, the, um, this new OSNAP will actually find the center point of this, um, there we go, see it light up uh, pink there. It's uh, detecting the center line of the circle based on the, the radius of that, um, or radius or diameter of that um, curvature of the wall. So I'm just going to grab this one in here, and it grabbed the center there, and I'm just going to strike a line straight up on the z-axis uh, to find that center point. And the reason this is useful is now we can generate 3D geometry that follows the curvature of this particular wall and quickly create conceptual ideas um, that match very um, closely with the existing geometry on this site. Um, so I'm just going to grab, where is it, uh, on the solids tab here on the ribbon. Um, I'm going to jump over to revolve. I'm going to use my revolve command and select that line that we drew at the corner of these two uh, walls here. And then it's going to prompt me to grab a, an object. So if I just hit enter, I can grab the center line there that I drew previously, and you'll see that I can create geometry. And I'm just going to reverse this so that it goes the other way here. And now I've created geometry that follows the curvature of that wall. And that'll create a 3D surface right there for you. And then you can quickly uh, iterate off of that to create um, the geometry that, uh, that we froze previously, um, which if I unisolate it and object isolation, you'll see that's how these were generated. So that is about it for point clouds. Uh, let me jump over to, uh, I'm just going to close out this drawing now so I'm not using it. Yep. Okay, so let's jump into the render engine here. So the render engine was changed in 2016. Um, we were using Mental Ray previously and this is uh, now Rapid RT. And it should be a little bit more intuitive um, for people to use. It's uh, a little easier to learn um, and the uh, uh, Let's see, where are we? Visualize, there we go. This is what I'm looking for. So uh, we've got this car here. Um, and over here on the render tab, it uh, looks almost the same, but once you start to drill down into the, um, the presets, uh, you'll recognize low, medium, and high. And it'll tell you the number of iterations that, um, that we'll go through. Uh, but a, an iteration isn't necessarily clear um, so sometimes, you know, you might be, oh, I, I need to uh, get this rendering out by lunch or by the end of the day. Um, so we've added these uh, coffee break quality, lunch quality, and overnight quality uh, presets. And if you hover over them, you'll see those tool tips come in. Um, renders for 10 minutes, renders for 60 minutes, and renders for 12 hours. Um, so it's a very easy way to tell exactly how long it's going to take you to get the results. Um, and then if we pop into the Render Presets Manager here, you'll see a, a few more settings here that we can play with. So if you mostly, you know, so let's say we're pretty happy with this um, coffee break quality uh, preset, but we want to change some things. Maybe we want to change the size of the, uh, of the output to um, full HDTV. 
for instance, you can come in here and uh, click this little sun picture and it'll create a copy of your coffee break. And you can rename it whatever you want. You know, my favorite preset or, or um, let's just call it favorite. Um, make any notes you want to remind yourself uh, how long it takes or uh, what kind of quality you're going to get out of that one. Um, then down here you'll get a uh, duration. So until satisfactory, um, render by level. So these are the iterations. There you go. And then render by time. So let's say we want to set this one to just one minute. And then we'll get render accuracy down here. And if you're wondering what each of these does, the tooltips in here are very helpful. So just hover over that and it'll tell you exactly um, what is meant by low quality, uh, draft quality, or high quality. Okay. All right. So there's another uh, another new tab here. Um, if you pop this down, uh, render environment and exposure. Oh, that's my sheet set. Uh, okay, there we go. So you'll see in here um, we've introduced uh, image-based lighting. And image-based image lighting um, allows you to um, pick from a, a list of presets here. And some of these actually uh, support 360 degree uh, high definition backgrounds. So for instance, the um, we'll use the plaza. Uh, this will be the rotation of the 360 degree image and I'll explain that a little more in a second. Uh, we want to make sure that we check use IBL image as background and then you can adjust your exposure and your white balance uh, cooler and warmer, brighter or darker and we'll see that in a second here. So you can actually render directly from that Render Presets Manager. So I'm going to do that. Make sure, I think I actually just want to, I want to make sure I'm not taking up too much time with the rendering portion here. We should get a pretty quick result here. Okay, so very quickly, you'll see, um, first of all, in this render window, while it's rendering, you can zoom in and you can pan around just to see the, the quality that you're getting out of that uh, out of that render. Um, so I'm just going to zoom back out there. And you'll see very quickly this um, this is that plaza um, that plaza background. And let's say we want to change that. Maybe we want the exposure to be a little brighter or a little darker, um, or we want the colors in this uh, uh, in this render to be a little warmer or a little cooler. I'm just going to close the render window pop back into this exposure and, um, uh, sorry, environment and exposure um, uh, panel here. And um, I'm just going to rotate it a little bit. I'll adjust the exposure down. Maybe we want it a little brighter. And maybe we want warmer colors. So let's bump this all the way up and I'll render again. And you'll see that's washed out. So you can very quickly go from one end to the other, but it only took us a second to find out, so I'll come back in here, and maybe we wanted it darker. Okay. Um, so as we move around, I'm just going to spin the model a little bit. It's not going to let me, oh. Uh, sorry, it's not cooperating with me. Okay, I'm just going to grab a front, front shot of it here. I'll adjust this down a little bit, and we'll keep the plaza going, hit render, and you'll see that the uh, background actually 
responds as you move the um, as you move the model around. So I'll close this again. I think we have a close up. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to rotate this all the way around. Render again. And we'll see this changes the perspective and the, the lighting in this picture. Okay, I think that's about it for rendering. Um, Dave, do you want to jump in and um, start into the BIM coordination model? Sure, let's see if I can take control here. Okay. And And can you see my screen okay? Mm. Uh, I cannot. Now we can. There you go. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. So uh, thanks, Victoria. That was some really cool stuff, and I'm sure everybody's wondering how I'm going to top that, but we're going to give it a shot here. Um, so what I want to talk about is uh, some new tools for doing coordination with an Auto AutoCAD. Um, I'm sure that uh, many of you are working with with people or friends that are using different file formats, and I bet a lot of you have said, gee, I wish I could bring in a Revit model into AutoCAD or something like that. Uh, and there's really been no good way to do that other than exporting DWGs from Revit into AutoCAD. Um, but with, uh, with 2016, we actually have a, a new set of tools where you can um, go in and uh, use the XREF tools, the attached tools, and in addition to uh, the standard you know, um, DWG files and things like that, you can now actually import a Navisworks file. And Navisworks files can really be composed of many different file formats. Uh, in fact, uh, just pull this up here for a second. Uh, it's pulled up a, a web page that shows all the different file formats that Navisworks can read. So you could bring in a, a, a drawing or a Navisworks file that had uh, some geometry for micro station, uh, have a Revit file in there, uh, maybe in vendor files or whatever it is, and you can actually import that as an Navisworks file into AutoCAD. So I'll show you how that works. It's just the same way that you would use a, a standard uh, AutoCAD XREF. I'll go ahead and attach this. And there are a couple of different uh, options in here that you wouldn't see with a, a standard um, DWG file. Uh, one is uh, show current drawing geometry in the model. So you may have already um, referenced in uh, or exported your model to a Navisworks file that's being compo you know, composited together to create an overall coordination model. And if you showed the geometry from your current drawing in when you had imported the, uh, the Navisworks file, it'd be like a circular reference. You'd have the, you know, the geometry twice. So typically, you're going to have this turned off. You're not going to want to show the geometry from your current model in the, uh, as you import this. And then, of course, uh, zoom to coordination model is another option here. But I'm just going to accept the default the values for the uh, insertion point. And it's going to import that Navisworks file into this drawing for me. Okay. And uh, so you can see that this brought this in. Um, this is a coordination model. So you can zoom around, you know, orbit just like you do with anything else. And uh, what I'm going to do is actually turn on some layers. I already have some uh, some geometry that uh, looks like ductwork. I won't say it's ductwork because I actually like AutoCAD MEP where you're drawing ducts as opposed to solids and things like that. But uh, you see that uh, we have some geometry in here. And if I select on the um, coordination model, you're going to see that there's some new settings over here. It have a contextual tab. And we can control color fading and the opacity. So, you know, if I had the, the opacity turned way down, you know, it's going to be really hard to see the, you know, what's in the model versus what's in the uh, coordination model. But if I uh, kind of turn that up a little bit here, you can fade away the coordination model and really make the uh, geometry that's in here stand out very nicely. Um, so I, so we, we, we can play around with that. By the way, there's a couple new system variables. Uh, for those of you that are geeky like Quoker that like system variables, uh, it's CM, or construction model fade color, and opacity. Okay? So you have those two um, system variables. The default for the color is 60% and the 
uh, default for opacity is 40 percent. But uh, you don't need to know those. You just select on it, and you can use the, the slider bar there on um, attaching it. Uh, there's also, uh, if you wanted to do a, a command line for attaching the uh, coordination model, it would be uh, dash cm attach, and that would be a construction model attach would allow you to, to import those that component in there. Uh, so we have some, we have this drawing. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and maybe make a, a quick change here. So I'm going to jump over to a view and um, I just want to finish off this little section of, of quote quote ducting that uh, is in the model. So I'm going to go ahead and just use a sweep. I'm going to see if I can select on this uh, circle here. No, that's not the circle. Why I would rather use a duct. Come on. There we go. And then I'm going to select the uh, path, and we'll kind of draw in that that uh, duct component there real quick. So so we have this uh, information here in the model. Um, but in, and you could work like this, and it's it's great if everybody's in the same company and uh, on the same network and you're sharing files. But uh, what happens if uh, you're working with a, a you know a construction firm or something where people are all over the place and you know you need a way to share these coordination models or, or your drawing for a coordinate coordination model with other people. Um, so that's where this uh, utility here called uh, BIM 360 uh, glue comes in. Uh, in. Instead of having everything s stored here on the on your network or on your local drive, you can actually uh, you know glue your current files up to a BIM 360 site, and you can attach uh, files from that BIM 360 site to your current drawing. Um, so to do that, and, and I'm going to be honest here, I'm going to you know wave my arms and do some smoke and mirrors because I don't want to wait um, a minute or two for each of these things to happen. But I'll show you how this works. Uh, if I hit the attach button, um, I already have a project set, set up. Uh, this uses the Autodesk uh, A360 single sign-in uh, single, uh, sign utilities. So I'm signed in here in AutoCAD as me, and I have a project set up here, just a sample project uh, that we can use. And um, when, we, when we're in here, um, I could be accessing this even from a, an iPad or something out in the field. That you don't have to be, um, you know, you don't have to have AutoCAD installed or, or to, to view the site. Um, you can actually view these models in, um, just to A360. But when you're using the attach, <coughs> uh, you can bring in merged models, which are basically um, a, a model that has multiple files linked together into one, or individual models. And you can see here that I've got individual uh, components set up. Uh, in this case, what I did is uh, I just selected the Stuart um, merge model, Stuart Tower merge model, and import it into, into uh, AutoCAD by using the attach command. As I said, uh, we're doing a little smoke and mirrors here, so what would happen here is it would bring it in like this, and if you bring it in from, uh, from the BIM 360 site, if I select on the file and I uh, go into the properties here, you're going to see that it's actually uh, bringing us in from that website. This isn't uh, being inserted from my local hard drive. So you can sit there and, and do all your kinds of coordination work uh, that way. I'll give you a little look at, uh, oh, by the way, um, this uh, BIM 360 uh, uh, plugin that, that uh, comes with AutoCAD, uh, I guess uh, BIM 360 is you know, one of the uh, re very regular cycle. So uh, when you first install AutoCAD 2016, it doesn't have the latest, greatest plugin for BIM 360. So uh, if you're in BIM 360, you can go over to your uh, profiles here down to downloads, and uh, it'll bring you to a page where you can download the latest plugin. So there's uh, you know plugins for the various products here. So for 2016, you could download your latest plugin, and uh, everything is going to work lovely for you. But you will have to in install that that plugin. Uh, so, but here in uh, in BIM 360 Glue, um, this is where you don't have to have any of the you know AutoCAD software or anything like that. You can actually just view this uh, model here, however you want, uh, and you know, and combine multiple models together. So you'll see if I go to, to the models page here. 
It'll take just a second to, to process this, and sometimes it opens up into a, you know, kind of expands everything. This has the architecture, the piping, the plumbing, and the ducting, the sheet metal that I've brought in. Um, so it's a, a, you know, a combined model showing all of that. Uh, just some of the things that you could do here. I'm, I'm not going to spend a lot of time in BIM 360, but um, you know, you can identify your objects. You can right-click and get properties of things. You could do some measuring. You can do, uh, you know, just look at the models. Uh, you could set up views that you can save so you can get back to it. You can do markups. Right. Um, activities, uh, I'm actually not sure what that is. Uh, but then there's also this uh, clashes uh, section here. And I want to show you this a little bit. Uh, similar to what you can do in Navisworks is uh, you can do uh, clash detection in BIM 360 group. So we can just say, okay, I want to compare the uh, architecture with the sheet metal. You know, the architecture actually includes all the steel in this particular case. And I'll give it a name. I'll say this is going to be uh, my ductwork um, clash. And I'll go ahead and say find clashes. And this will go ahead and process the, the uh, model. And this is going a little bit slower since I'm on uh, the webcast here. But it doesn't take very long. And it found uh, 1,058 clashes. So obviously, there's some work to be done here in, uh, in cleaning this thing up if you want it for a coordination model. However, <clears throat> the one that I want, and I happen to know the number since I've already done this rep report once before, is uh, 950. Let's see if I can just scroll down. Okay. So I'm going to select this. And uh, I'm going to say that I want to, you know, identify this. It actually, if you kind of look in the background, you'll see all the clashes showing up as like these little boxes. And I could pick on one, and it'll tell me what the what the clash number is and all of that. Uh, but I can just sit there and say, okay, I want to notify uh, somebody to take care of this particular clash, or I could select a whole bunch of them and notify them all at once. Select uh, somebody from the uh, project, and in this case, I'll send it to me. And I'll just say, uh, you know, please fix this and send that clash report. And it said, it, oh, it went and sent that to me. And actually, what that did is it uh, sent an, an email to me, um, which was great. But uh, I don't have my email open. I'll just go ahead and take a look at this in a second. But it actually will identify where the clash is and all of that there in the model. And then back in uh, an AutoCAD, um, there's uh, so I, we talked about this already, right? Glue attaches something up to the BIM 360 site, attach brings it down. But then there's also this pinpoint um, option here. And what that will do is uh, it'll say, okay, um, I have a, a clash result that I need to work with. I actually just created that uh, a few moments ago, and I want to go ahead and view this. So I'm going to select that and say view selected. And it will bring me right to where this problem exists. I can turn the model back on if I want and see the whole model. And uh, actually, I created a, a quick, convenient way for me to um, kind of fix this. So I'm just going to go to that same object. And uh, here's that clash uh, with the beam and the, uh, the solid here. And I'm just going to pick on this and kind of stretch it down below. And uh, I could save this file. I could uh, re-glue it back uh, to the BIM360 site. It'll ask me if I want to update the model. I'd say yes. And then I could go back into BIM360 and actually uh, you know, run the clash again. And it'll show that as being resolved. <laughs> so it's a, some pretty exciting stuff. Um, it's just a, a real quick look at uh, some of the coordination stuff. but. Uh, I, I think that uh, this will come in really handy for folks as they are uh, you know, doing coordination with other firms. So with that, I will turn it back to Volker. All right, Dave. Thank you. And Victoria, thank you. So some pretty good stuff, some high-end stuff, um, but, and obviously not for everyone. You know, that's the thing about uh, these new features. If you don't use the stuff, you're probably going, ah. Whatever, but there uh, the people who do use it, I, I saw a lot of wows there are very cool and and I think what I was seeing, wow, things have come a long way 
since uh, we first started using rendering on our desktops or uh, point clouds. So, um, so hopefully we showed you some cool new stuff. I'm going to wrap it up here with uh, some um, oh, uh, lighter topics. Let's put it that way. All right. And the first thing I'd like to talk about is um, the improved graphics in AutoCAD. 2016, and uh, this really all depends on whether you have a, um, a direct, if your workstation is capable of running DirectX 11 on this first one here. You'll see that uh, the circle here is a bit jagged, okay, and that is because I have my, um, what is called the, uh, Dave, I forget what the system variable is for that exactly, but it's uh, high quality geometry system variable, and uh, it is turned off right now. I think that's HQG on, isn't it? I think it is, HQG on, thank you. I um, always forget that one for some reason. But uh, and, uh, and you're not showing the AutoCAD screen, Volker. Oh, I'm not. Oh, good grief. Didn't I do this like a couple of weeks ago? <laughs> yeah, awkward moment again. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Yeah, it should be a minute here to refresh. That's All right. Good. Sorry, guys. So nobody really noticed the jagged lines, did they? <laughs> All right, so uh, notice the circle. That the lines are not very. Uh, the circles curve is not very smooth. And that's because I have my um, new system variable. HQGOM turned off, and again, I do need DirectX 11 for this to be enabled. I've right-clicked over the um, uh, graphics performance uh, utility or 3D config command in some cases, and you'll see that I have DirectX 11 here, and if I turn on this variable, which is on by default, if you're running um, DirectX 11, you'll see a much smoother surface here. And speaking of things like that, you'll notice I have a little bubble here. This is a system variable uh, monitor that was introduced. And this is very cool. Right now, uh, I'm going to click on this hyperlink, and it tells me that my pick auto system variable has changed. So so why would this change? You know, Many reasons. Uh, we run an old Lisp routine that has to turn off uh, a variable in order to work properly. It may have turned it off. You may not notice it. And, and pretty soon before you know it, something isn't working right. So we have our preferred method here and what the current value is. And the preferred method may be whatever you want it to be. You can add variables to this list that you want to keep tracking. Uh, once a change has occurred, you're notified. You can just click reset all and it puts it right back to that variable setting. So here's a good example. Um, as far as that goes, uh, we get many support requests on this here. I'm going to go into the open command, and huh, there's no dialog. Okay, but on the command line, it's prompting me to open up a drawing. This is the system variable file DIA, and it got changed. Well, okay, I typed it in, but it got changed, let's say, by Lispertine, okay, or maybe a previous user or a script. Uh, I'm going to go and see, all right, what's going on here with this um, with this system variable, and there we go. <laughs> that never happens with AutoCAD. All right. Is this an awkward moment? Yeah. Dave, would you, um, while I do this, um, actually, I'll do this while I'm waiting for that. Yeah, this is a very awkward moment. But, hey, we've all worked with AutoCAD. We, we know, right? Let's talk about some of these system variables, and we'll launch my system here again in a minute, my AutoCAD. Um, always. Be aware of the changes to system variables uh, with new releases. I had a call the other day. Uh, I, I forget what, what it was, but 
such and such wasn't working anymore. And that's because the system variable had changed. It had a different default. And in the help file, we actually have new commands and system variables listed and what they do. Uh, some of these we discussed in the AutoCAD LT uh, webinar, which we'll uh, present again next week. And uh, like close all other, we also have a digital signature, which we can apply to our auto list routines. Uh, we have a new method of scripting, and that applies to both AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT, which is called a script call, which actually allows you to uh, nest your scripts within other scripts. Uh, again, the dim layer we discussed last week. Uh, here's some new system variables for the line fading, which was introduced uh, last uh, release. We can now actually change the intensity of fading, uh, line fading. Rev cloud grip. So always kind of keep an eye on these uh, variables. Every help file has these. Um, and in this case, those were the new ones, but we also will show you the updated ones. And um, one of the things I noticed um, is that my favorite system variable, which has been updated, there's actually a mistake in the documentation here. Uh, that, of course, for those long time, OS mode, it's not listed here, but it has changed as well. So. Um, it is in the documentation, it's just not listed as a modified system variable. So, yeah, this is kind of annoying. Um, I think what we'll do is show the rest of that during our next webinar, as long as we're kind of on hold here. Let's go ahead and uh, answer, uh, I'll finish up with the PowerPoint real quick like and get some polls, and then we're going to answer questions, and uh, we will continue to answer those after, uh, after we do the um, uh, stop the recording as well. So first of all, I'd like to run our last poll, and I do apologize about the abrupt closure of that one. <laughs> so uh, our first poll here, our last poll actually. Um, have you learned something new today? Okay, so more people than less have learned something new today. Okay, well, we will call it 96% saying they learned something new today. Thank you on that one. I'll go ahead and close that. Let me show you um, a little bit more of my um, PowerPoints here. And here are some additional resources that you should be aware of. Uh, and they're just quick links here. We have uh, showing the differences between AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT. Um, a little bit more about the, uh, the CAD tools for design documentation is more about uh, what's available in AutoCAD. Uh, if you have questions about your uh, subscription account, the account management is a good one. And then, of course, there's my hero, Lynn Allen, who has one of the best blogs available out there. She's like the CAD goddess. Um, you, want, you want to find out stuff about AutoCAD? Check out Lynn's blog, it's great. Heidi Hewitt, also another great resource for um, uh, finding, uh, learning AutoCAD tips and tricks and so forth. The Autodesk community, that is our discussion group uh, forum where you can leave questions and get answers. Again, the AutoCAD commands and system variable reference I just showed you. And then Augie, AutoCAD User Group International. If you haven't checked it out, I encourage you to do that. I believe one final slide here, and that is coming up. Uh, well, actually, we just did that one, AutoCAD 2016, but uh, non-core presentation next week for AutoCAD LT 2016. Then we're going to touch on some more AutoCAD commands in our Back to Basics series. So. Uh, Things like trim, 
extend, fillet, and camphor uh, for those wanting to know more about the innards of those commands. Uh, then followed by a webinar about line types, customization of creating your own line types, understanding the different system variables that affect them. And our last scheduled class for the time being is an introduction to 3D modeling in AutoCAD. So obviously that applies to AutoCAD, uh, not AutoCAD LT, but it'll be a good, good webinar. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording just because we're out of time, but we will go ahead and take some additional questions. I thank you all for being here today, and uh, we hope to see you next week. Anybody who'd like to work with us some more questions, we'll be happy to answer those. So I got a, a, a good one for you, Volker. I'm surprised it hasn't come up before. Um, somebody's asking if there's any kind of uh, continuing education credits that you get for watching these uh, webinars. Uh, no, we don't have any of those. Um, I think we were looking into that, but um, I am not.